Space is infinitely large, infinitely fascinating, and most of all, infinitely scary. While roughly 99.99% .99 of it is literally empty space, when you do come across something of substance, there's a halfway decent chance it could easily kill you, or at the very least destroy your life. Much of what's truly scary about space is millions or even billions of light years away, so there's little chance for it to affect our daily lives. However, space is incredibly unpredictable and completely out of our control. If some rogue star or errant black hole decides that tomorrow is our little blue marble's time to go, then we're just going to have to accept it. In the meantime, join us as we count down 10 truly terrifying facts about the horror film that is our universe. They say nature abhors a vacuum. Well, she should do something about the astronomically powerful vacuum that is slowly but surely sucking up our galaxy like a spaghetti noodle. Roughly 150 to 250 million light years away from our own Milky Way galaxy lies an anomaly known as the Great Attractor. A cute name like that betrays just how horrifying this thing is. Its massive gravitational pull is enough to send entire galaxies its way, where they then collapse upon themselves, and very likely we're on a collision course with it. Remember, nothing in space sits still and that includes the Milky Way. Our galaxy zips through space at 1.3 million miles per hour, and because the Great Attractor is so gravitationally powerful, we are headed right toward it. Granted, this isn't likely to happen for a few billion years, but simply knowing the universe has already decided our galaxy's fate like that is sobering to say the least. What's truly scary is we still don't actually know what the Great Attractor is. For one thing, there doesn't appear to be enough mass around that area to account for all that gravitational pull. Not that we could just peer into a telescope to find out. The Great Attractor is, conveniently enough, hidden behind what's called the Zone of Avoidance. That's the part of the Milky Way that's so cluttered with gases, stars, and space dust that we simply can't see beyond it. So whatever the Great Attractor actually is, it remains largely a mystery, beyond the fact that it's endlessly huge and endlessly hungry. are all the rage right now, what with scientists recently capturing our first ever image of these otherwise invisible nightmares. But the eye of Sauron looking phenomenon that's trending in the news isn't the black hole we should be worried about. There's one far closer, and far more capable of crushing us without a single thought. Given the catchy name of B31715 plus 425, this hole is wandering through space at about 3 million miles per hour. And I do mean wandering. Most black holes remain attached to its galaxy, but B31715 plus 425 is something else entirely. A rogue black hole whose galaxy got ripped to shreds after colliding with a bigger galaxy. Rather than assimilate into the bigger galaxy, as most black holes do, B31715 plus 425 instead found itself ripped away, hurling around space on its lonesome, sucking up whatever's in its path. It's the intergalactic equivalent of a starving tiger that escaped the zoo and is heading for your backyard. The rogue B31715 plus 425 is currently about 2 billion light years away from us, but at its current zippy speed, it could potentially cover that distance mighty fast. And if it does come our way, we won't even know, because everything around us will instantaneously disappear. B31715 plus 425 is a million times more massive than the sun, so it likely won't have to get close at all if it wants to destroy our entire galaxy. World leaders billions of light years away are certainly scary, but at least we can sleep knowing they're not likely to kill us in our lifetime. However, there is something that could, if not kill us, instantaneously destroy our power and technology, sending us back to the dark ages with no warning whatsoever. The culprit? Our very own sun. Occasionally, the sun emits gigantic solar flares that can generate cosmic solar storms. These storms cause catastrophic levels of UV radiation and energy to hurtle hundreds of millions of miles from the sun's surface in a matter of seconds. If any of these storms come Earth's way, the radiation and energy would likely be enough to disable and destroy all things electric. Goodbye internet, GPS, TV, and artificial lighting of any kind. We would instantly be plunged back into pre-technological times, relying on whatever heat and light Earth decides to provide for us and nothing more. It would likely take years to recover, and the cost would be trillions of dollars. Don't think for a second it can't happen, because just a few years ago it almost did. In July 2012, the sun belched out its most powerful solar flare in over 150 years, sending a huge wave of toxic energy screaming through Earth's orbit. Our planet missed getting caught in the crossfire by just one week. Had the sun thrown its tantrum just a wee bit sooner, the world today would be mighty different. Very possibly, you wouldn't be watching this video right now, nor would I have written and filmed it. Instead, we'd all be farming for food and huddling around candles for warmth at night.
You know how our old friends the dinosaurs bid farewell to existence thanks to a meteor strike 65 million years ago? Well, that could happen again at literally any time. If a big enough space rock were to enter our atmosphere and punch our planet at top speed, anywhere from 25,000 to 160,000 miles per hour, the ensuing series of disasters combined with oxygen-choking dust would send almost all life to an early grave. Thankfully, we do have modern technology, provided a solar flare doesn't knock it all out first, that can track nearby meteors, comets, and asteroids. If we detect one may be close and large enough to do major damage, we can work to reroute or even destroy it before it destroys us. But even then, if space wants to hurt us, it can and will, no matter what we think. We got a big reminder of that in 2013, when a meteor entered the atmosphere over Russia. It broke apart and the mini rocks wound up injuring hundreds. But what if it had stayed intact? If it did, and if it had been any bigger, untold amounts of life could have perished. Much like an empire conquering new lands to become a bigger empire, there are actually stars out there so dedicated to becoming bigger, brighter stars, they were literally eat nearby stars to become bigger and brighter. Technically called O-type stars, but more appropriately nicknamed vampire stars, these predators are typically enormous blue giants attached to much smaller stars that serve as the bigger star's dinner. Imagine a supermassive Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat sucking his opponent's souls to stay forever young and you're on the right track. This kind of life isn't meant to last long, and indeed these vampire stars are on a collision course with doom. Once it sucks up enough of its partner star's energy, not only will the smaller star be left a cold, lifeless husk, but the vampire star will grow so massive and so bloated that it will likely explode in a spectacular supernova. That's why it's so important to not overeat. Sometimes the scariest something is nothing at all. Take the Eridanus Supervoid, a section of intergalactic space that is just that, super void. There's literally nothing inside, not even dark matter. Scientists estimate the Eridanus Supervoid, also known as the CMB Cold Spot, measures 500 million light years across. A light year spans roughly 5.88 trillion miles, so multiply that by 500 million and realize there's an entire section of space that large, with absolutely nothing around. Now realize that NASA has yet to discover anything in the universe larger than that. Some think the void may be the largest black hole in the universe, while others actually think it may have formed when a parallel universe collided with our own, stamping out any and all matter caught in the middle. While the multiverse theory is certainly left field, it's currently about as plausible as any other explanation for the void's eerie existence. Few sights are more beautiful than a starry night sky. On a clear evening, space can seem positively littered with glowing dots and swirls of different shapes and sizes. It won't last forever, however. As depressing as it sounds, Earth will eventually bear witness to a sky with virtually nothing on display. Future night watchers will see nothing but endless black. Over the next several billion years, our galaxy will merge with other galaxies, keeping them largely out of view. Meanwhile, other galaxies will move further and further away from us, making it difficult and eventually impossible for us to see them. Adding to that issue is that as the universe expands more and more, it'll do so faster and faster, to the point where one day you'll see stars and the next they're gone forever. In billions of years, if we're still around, humans will likely have no idea space even exists. They'll see the sun, the moon, a few extra dots here and there, and that's it. As Scientific American explained, to our distant descendants, the universe will look like a small puddle of stars in an endless, changeless void. It's not quite as romantic as a backlit canopy, but far more realistic. Not everything scary about space is millions or billions of miles away. Sometimes space can mess with us right in front of your very eyes. Take a 2016 incident, where the rigors of space actually changed a man's genetic buildup to the point where he became an entirely different person. In 2016, an astronaut named Scott Kelly returned to Earth after a year working in the International Space Station. To his surprise, he learned that he was two inches taller than before, which shouldn't happen to adults. But that's not all. Scientists studied his DNA and discovered that his genetic makeup had dramatically changed compared to when he first left Earth. This meant that for all intents and purposes, Scott Kelly was literally a new man. He also no longer had an identical twin brother. When he left Earth, fellow astronaut Mike Kelly looked exactly like him. A year later, they were fraternal twins, simply because space willed it that way. But how? Scientists believe that space is so foreign and so hard on the human body that it can actually alter our cells' basic biology, effectively mutating them. This is what happened to Scott Kelly, and he's remained a changed person to this day. He's no longer two inches taller than his brother, but his DNA remains altered, and it will likely stay that way for the rest of his life. 
If you're going to die in space, chances are it won't happen due to a black hole or a solar flare smacking you in the face. More likely, you'll succumb to the horrors of decompression or exposure to the vacuum of space, which sounds like a terrible way to go. For the most part, if an astronaut suffers decompression, they will die very shortly after. In 1965, a technician at Houston's Johnson Space Center was working in a vacuum chamber. He accidentally detached a hose which immediately depressurized his spacesuit. Within seconds, he was unconscious, though thankfully others were present to repressurize his suit in time for him to regain consciousness. Even that brief bit of exposure to what is essentially space damaged the man. He could feel his tongue begin to boil as he passed out, and for four days afterward, he couldn't taste anything. He wound up being okay, but exposure to that vacuum for even a few seconds longer could have proven devastating, if not violent fatal. Let's close this video out with a terrifying space fact that only exists because of us. Look up in the night sky and realize that among the stars and lights there are likely countless dead bodies up there. We've effectively turned space into an infinitely large floating cemetery. While we don't do it anymore, the early days of exploring space saw us doing so using animals. We would send dogs, cats, rats, flies, rabbits, frogs, and even a chimpanzee into space, mostly to see what would happen. As it turned out, nothing good happened, and tragically many animals died in space. Even worse, many of them are still up there, stuck in spacecrafts that never returned to Earth and are doomed to drift forever through space, alone and forgotten. Even creepier is how many failed human missions met the same fate. Nobody ever collected these spacecrafts either, meaning countless doomed Major Toms are stuck up there too, floating in their tin cans far above the world for all eternity, or at least until the sun catches them and roasts them to dust. 